I wasted years trying to fix my low back pain following the common advice that you see on YouTube and social media, probably just like a lot of you have. This is the story that changed my life forever and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. This is why I'm on social media making these videos. This is why I'm on the internet trying to promote the things that I really do find actually work and this is going to be really helpful for you as well. Now I know this is gonna be really hard for you guys to believe and relate to, but I actually herniated a disc at my L4, L5 doing a deadlift with way too much weight that I should have been doing to impress a girl at the gym. I was pulling the weight off of the floor and then I felt a pop at my left low back and then boom, I immediately hit the floor. And I honestly felt like I couldn't get up. I thought I was maybe paralyzed. Now I know that sounds a little dramatic, but at the time didn't really feel that way because I didn't really know what was happening. I've never felt this before, but give it 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I was like, okay, I can actually kind of shake my leg out, but I could not get up from the floor. It took me about five minutes to fully muster my strength and really talk myself into getting off of the floor and being able to fully use that leg. And I didn't know what was going on. I was just a regular personal trainer at the time. So I just walked into my mentor at the time's office. I told him what was going on and he said, oh, well, sounds like you herniated a disc. And when that happens, you have this little jelly-like thing in the middle of your vertebrae that when you flex your spine under load, it can have a tendency in some cases to shoot out the back and that's what causes a disc herniation. And I was kind of puzzled by that because I was like, well, that's weird because when I was lifting that weight, I was very much extended, puffing my chest out, shoving my butt back. And I didn't really come out of that position until I hit the ground. So that was the first thing I was kind of scratching my head about. But regardless, I didn't know what was going on. This guy was way smarter than me. So I just started doing his rehab exercises. I was doing things like McKinsey extensions. I was doing things like kettlebell swings, trying to puff my chest out and really build up and strengthen my low back but that wasn't really helping for more than a couple of minutes. And over time, it started to get better over a period of weeks. And I think that was just the natural healing process, but I felt like that was actually because of the exercises themselves. Well, I went to go and do a very light deadlift again once I felt like my back was much better, probably a month down the road. Boom, it happens again. Not to the same extent, but something was wrong. And so I walked into his office again and he said, something that I'll never forget. And he said, don't worry about things that you can't control. This stuff just happens sometimes. And to me, that was completely unacceptable. That's not something that I think anyone should have a mindset about. Don't worry about things I can't control. That's crazy to me. That doesn't make any sense. Fast forward a couple of months and now I'm doing a summer internship. And this is at a gym where I didn't know what was really going on, but I was referred there from my mentor. And this guy was a former mentee about 10 years ago. So I, I walk in and one of the first things he says to me is, hey, I have a lot of respect for our mentor, but I disagree with almost everything he has to say about the lower back. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Okay, well, tell me more because I'm still in pain. And we go through this process and two days later, my pain is completely gone. So to me, this was absolutely revolutionary. And what we determined was it wasn't that I needed more extension. More extension was actually the reason why my back was kind of hurting in the first place. I couldn't get out of extension. So what was going on was I not only had this very extended low back, but it was also twisted to one side. And that was creating this environment where my vertebrae were extended and then slightly twisted, not very well stacked on top of each other. So that was creating an environment that did allow for that disc to shoot out the back to some extent. So what we needed to do was address why I was in this extended pattern. And what I did was I did exercises that helped stack my rib cage over my pelvis more effectively. So what we determined was I was in this extension pattern, but I was also rotated more forward on the left than the right. My left side was more extended than my right. So what ended up happening was I needed to bring my pelvis back into more of a neutral position on both sides, but also better rotate to the left because I couldn't load my left hip. My low back was taking all of that beating. And this is where it can become very relatable for some of you. If you're stuck in this extension position, then it can be really hard for us to get 
out of that and stack our head over our rib cage, over our pelvis. Extension actually limits the ability for you to rotate in and out of one or both hips. So because I was so used to being in anterior pelvic tilt and a lot of extension, we needed to get me more comfortable moving into flexion. So we did the following exercise I'm about to show you to help better stack things. And then we need to identify the deficit in my ability to rotate my hips to one side, which was the left side because my pelvis was turned towards the right. We're gonna start with an object in between our knees that's a little bit compressible that allows our knees to stay in line with our toes. So it's not too large, shoving our knees out. It's not too small, making our knees collapse in. We're gonna place it in between the mid part of our thigh there. Now, we're gonna get one foot length away from the wall. So take one step, place your heel in line with your toes of that back leg, and now get a toe straight ahead hip width stance. Now we're gonna make sure that our head is stacked over our rib cage and our pelvis. So we want a lot of our back touching the wall with our head nice and relaxed, our gaze looking straight ahead. And then what we're going to do is feel the foot contacts of the inner heel and the first metatarsal head on both sides evenly. That doesn't mean we lose the outside foot and roll off of it. That just means that's where our focus is on both sides evenly, our bias is there. Now, Feeling on the wall, the most important contact of our low back is our PSIS. Those are those kind of bony spots at the back side of our pelvis. We'll put up an image to show you where that is. So Trevor's gonna be focusing on those foot contacts and on the wall, the PSIS evenly on both sides relative to what he's capable of doing. Now he's gonna place his hands on a chair, ideally something that he can kind of roll or push and he's just gonna reach it away from him, not letting his sternum depress. So he's gonna stay, again, nice and tall and stacked. So he's just gonna reach that slightly away. That's gonna give him some protraction of the shoulder. His shoulder blade is gonna move away from his spine, but he's gonna remain tall. Now all he's gonna do is breathe in through his nose, silently, out through his mouth, sighing the air out. For about five to eight seconds of an exhale. At the end of that exhale, he might feel a little side abs engaged. Not six pack abs, but side abs. He's going to maintain a slight contraction in those side abs as he silently, super slowly inhales through his nose. And that's going to give him some nice opening of the backside of his rib cage. And he should feel some expansion back there. We identified this through a few tests, primarily that I could better rotate my pelvis to the right than to the left. And also I had better internal rotation on my right hip and better external rotation on my left hip. You could see how if I turn my pelvis to the right side, how that would influence the ability for this leg to turn in more and this leg to turn out more. So we needed to create space for me to better shift into internal rotation on my left hip. So we did this following exercise that helped open up the back of my left hip to create more of that space. This is the standing supported posterior hip capsule stretch. What we're gonna do is find something that's about waist height, whatever that is, it could be a desk, it could be a bench, whatever. And we're gonna find something that we can keep our whole foot flat on. So we have a little block here, but a book can work perfectly fine so long as your whole foot is flat. And it's about two inches. I wouldn't go much higher than that. One to two inches is all you need. So what we're gonna do is start with our feet hip width apart, toes pointing straight ahead. Jacob is gonna take a slight step forward with his passive leg here. So that way he has his toes in line with the midfoot because we're stretching out the left side. So the left toes are in line with the right side midfoot, toes pointing pretty straight ahead. Now we need to find the right foot contacts on that left side. We're going to, if you just move that foot out of the way really quick, Jacob, we're gonna find the base of the big toe, the inner heel, and we're not gonna lose the outside foot as we do that. So make sure that that's where most of your weight is. I would say about two thirds to three fourths of your weight should be on this left foot, on those foot contacts without losing the outside foot. The other portion, about 25 to 33% of your weight is in this right foot right here. Okay, now what Jacob is gonna do is he's gonna put his hands on that supporting object right here. Now this is more of a shift than sort of trying to dump into your hips initially. So the way that we can ensure we're doing this effectively is for Jacob to just keep more or less the same amount of hip bend and sort of push his pelvis back and off to the left. He's gonna turn his zipper towards the left foot arch right there. And as he does that and leans back a little bit right there, he should feel a stretch 
back right exactly around this region right here. It shouldn't be in the front of his hip or this side. It should be exactly right there. So one way that you can ensure that you get a good stretch and to make sure your zipper is facing the right way is to push the right knee slightly forward and the left knee very slightly in. And then I finally needed to train the muscles that help shift me into my left hip properly into that new space that I just created. The muscles that are primarily helpful for that are my inner thigh adductor muscles, which create that internal rotation and also my oblique muscles because the obliques help pull the rib cage down and the pelvis back on that side. And the adductors again, help pull us into that given side, the left side in this example. This is the sideline adductor pullback activity. What we're gonna do is lay on our side and we need a 90 degree bend at both our knees and our hips. And we also have the head supported on that bottom side arm, just like that, nice and perfectly relaxed. We also have an object in between our knees. Now this needs to be a slightly compressible object. We have a ball here and you could also use like a pillow folded in half, Worst case scenario, you could maybe use a foam roller, but it's generally not as compressive as we want it to be, but something like that. The object needs to be a good enough size to where it allows the knees to stay in line with the feet and also the hips. We don't want it to be too wide to where we're up here or the knee is collapsing down too much. So this is a great starting position for Trevor right here. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure our feet are nice and flat on that wall on both sides. A big common setup mistake I see is people have their feet too far back or too far forwards. You want, again, that 90 degree bend right there. So we're going to focus on feeling primarily the inner heel of this top leg right here. And we're not gonna lose the inside edge of the base of the big toe right there or the outside. So those are the points of contact. Just focus on keeping this foot flat on the wall, generally speaking. Now to initiate this exercise, Trevor's going to do a nice, long, full five to 10 second exhale. That's going to bring his rib cage down and that's going to engage a little bit of his side ab muscles right there. That's good. Now that might tuck his pelvis underneath him a little bit, but it should happen because of the exhale. So he's gonna feel like his rib cage comes down and in a little bit as a net result of that full exhale. That's good. Now, focusing on those foot contacts on the top side, Trevor's going to very subtly pull this top knee back just a couple of inches, not letting his feet move on the wall. And then he's going to exhale and very gently push down. Gentle is the key word right here, three out of 10 and that's going to engage his top side legs, inner thigh muscle, and maybe a little bit of the side of his butt cheek, but we'll talk about that in a second, but primarily that inner thigh. Then he's going to inhale again and try to pull it back just an inch further. If he can't get it to go back further, that's okay. Just have the subtle but low effort intention to, and that will help you get more of that inner thigh muscle on that top side. And then he's gonna repeat this process. He's gonna do this for a total of five breath cycles. He's never gonna let this top knee move forward. He's always gonna keep it pulled back with the intention of pulling it just a couple of centimeters or even millimeters back with each subsequent inhale. Inhale back through the nose, exhale, very gentle push down. Remember, low effort is key and we're focused on keeping the rib cage down. I did those exercises both in the morning and at night for two days for about three sets of five breath cycles. And my pain completely went away and was so much better after doing that. And comparing that to what I did before with those just basic standard rehab exercises that you see all over the internet, just extension biased exercises, core strengthening exercises. It just wasn't enough. It wasn't getting the job done because it wasn't the root cause. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about my own personal story and what I did to overcome a lot of the generic stuff that doesn't work and how I finally found the root cause of my issues. And hopefully that inspires you guys to do the same and gives you some insight and some exercises you can try for yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.